It was the night before Christmas. I was closing down for business. Hi, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria, and we are working on days 18, 19, and 20 for December daily. As always, a reminder to please go check out my collaboration partner, Irit. Her channel is linked below. We are trying to alternate our December daily so that you have one December daily to watch pretty much every day of the week. We're doing the best we can. I am starting off here with a page for which I am making a pocket. The original pocket idea for this I believe was from wonderful Joie de Fille and I will actually link, I will try to find her video um, linked below and I also have another video where I actually made this pocket in a previous video a while ago um, that I will link down below as well. So I am taking a book page and so this is not really a tutorial because uh, Joie has a great tutorial. There's no need for me to make another one. But this is exactly the one I'm following. So you can go check out her video to see the exact steps explained really well. And so this pocket ha actually has um, one, two, three pockets. Plus I'm going to give it one pocket on the side. By the way, I'm gluing it down. And at this stage, I'm inking everything up. This time I'm using my tea dye Distress Oxide just because it was a very white page and I thought the lighter edging would look nicer than my, my, my vintage photo. And now I'm at the part where I'm already gluing down the edges of the pocket. I think pockets are always so much fun and all of the three days I'm working on today they don't have a whole lot of writing because I guess in these three days I wasn't really in the mood to write a lot I was more in the mood for just creating and actually I was inspired by Irit's recent video where she reminded us that it's not always necessary to do a complete page in one day. Maybe one day you just feel like gluing things in your journal or one day you feel just like writing or you know putting in a few stickers or stamping a little bit in your journal. It's there for you to play. There's no rules. The only rules that are there are whatever you uh, rules you come up with. So just do what, what you think is fun. So <laughs> I'm showing him because I think he's quite creepy. I did not want to use him, <laughs> this little dwarf. This is from my advent calendar that I, had, that I had shown in a previous video that I had found at Goodwill recently. I did, however, love this number 18, so that had to go on my pocket. And then I'm going to use this advent calendar. I'm here showing you. Look at this picture on the wall. It has a bunny and it has the Christmas tree branches on top of the of the painting. My mom always used to do that at home with our paintings for Christmas. She added a little red bow as well and that reminded me of, of that at home. So I'm going to use this advent calendar to decorate all the tags and the front of the, po of the pocket as you see here um, with images from this calendar just because I wanted to keep everything cohesive. I didn't like how that front was looking. I wanted a bigger image. So I chose this one which was from the 17th and I am just figuring out how big the piece needs to be and then I am cutting it down, rounding the corners just to, to fit the pocket where I've also rounded the corners and I like that a lot better. And then I'm going to add this number 18 that kind of brightens up the whole front of the pocket. Now I'm measuring the biggest tag for this bag, back <laughs> pocket. I didn't want it sticking out a whole lot, just a little bit. And I'm again rounding the corners. Then I'm choosing another image.
And I like that. Oh, which one did I take? I thought I'd take the one with the post office. Maybe I'll take that one for another one. But I do use it for some of these, for, for one of these tags. It's such a hard choice because all of these images are just so adorable. Ah, okay, I take the one with the sleigh or the, the sledding. And again, I'm just cutting it down to fit on the tag. Gluing it down and there is some space on the top and the bottom. So on the top, I make it look like a real tag. So I'm punching in a hole and I'm putting in a hole reinforcement that I have inked up with some tea dye. And I'm just going to put it on the front and the back. So one more reminder, if you buy the white reinforcements, be sure not to buy the glossy ones because your, your oxide or your, your um, ink will not stick when it's glossy. Then I wanted to add this Let It Snow stamp, which I got locally one or two years ago. And I'm going to cut around that, just on some plain white cardstock. And after inking that up, I'm just going to glue that down on the bottom right there in the middle. And then I wanted to choose one of these beautiful Avril yarns for the top of the tag. And it looks like little snowflakes there. If you want to purchase Avril yarn, just search for Avril yarn on Etsy. They have plenty and they're just, there's so many and they're all gorgeous. Like I would like to have every single one of those. <laughs> they're so fun. Now I doubled it up because it's quite thin. And I'm just tying a little bow there. Yeah, that's really cute. That does look like snowflakes, doesn't it? And lastly, I wanted to add this very cute snowflake charm, which came in the November Your Creative Studio box was trying to figure out a way to um, include that in my journal for a while and I think this is the perfect tag to do that with. So I'm just taking some very thin twine, tying another tiny bow around my other bow. And that's what that looks like. I think it's adorable. And that's going to go in that back pocket. And that snowflake is going to hang over the pocket. Tackling the next tag, I'm going to put that in the next pocket. Just figuring out the height. I didn't want it going over the other tag. So I again rounded the corners, inking the edges, and I'm again looking for another image. I think this is the one, yeah, I choose the, the post box from the kids are, I think, throwing in their letters for Santa Claus, their wish lists. This time I'm going to cover the whole tag with the image. So I'm tracing around my cardstock and I cut it out and I'm rounding the corners again, sticking that on, inking it up. I think I just cut that part out because it's so boring. <laughs> so we've got two tags now. I don't think I do anything else with that one. Now for the third tag, for the third pocket, same process. And there's this cute one with the mom with some Christmas cake or something. I'm again covering the whole cardstock. Same thing, rounding the corners, gluing it on. And I wanted to add the stamp Happy Holidays. This is again from the Your Creative Studio November box. 
I don't think I've ever used a box as much as this November box. <laughs> All the items come in so handy. So that's also really cute, I think. So that goes in the front pocket. And now we're going to look for a page to put this on. Not that one. And yeah, it's going to go right next to that one using the last bits of my three in one glue. And I'm just putting it on the top, bottom and right side of the tag because I wanted it to be a pocket as well. And remember we had this image left that I had cut out first because I thought it was going to go in the front of the pocket. But instead now it's going to be a tag to fit in the side. Also adding a stamp. These I've also got locally. I think this one says Merry and Bright. Again, stamped it on my cardstock. And after ink it up, inking it up, I'm just gluing it on the top there. Look at the little teddy bear. Did you see how he's looking out the window? He's so adorable. And that will be on the side there. So now we have the top one, the middle one, the bottom one, and this side one. So again, plenty of tags. Always fun these pages with lots of pockets and tags, I think. So the next day, I just wanted to show you <laughs> what a gator mouth my journal has become again. So as you can see, I'm also able to do this with altered book journals, not just with sewed in signatures. I can do it with any journal. <laughs> Here I'm showing you these beautiful tags that I got from, uh, so this one is from Irit and the next one is from Eva. So these are the two charming ladies that I have met recently in Vienna. And um, if you haven't seen, we made a vlog together, my first vlog. Irit and I both, so she has one on her channel and I have one on my channel. If you've missed it, go check it out. We went to some of our Christmas markets here in Vienna and we took you guys along and hopefully you had fun and enjoyed the little tour that we gave you. And these are some bits that I bought at the flea market. And this is from a company in Budapest called Bomo Art. And they, they also have a web shop. And look at how gorgeous their products are. I could have bought everything on that table that they had there. They had beautiful journals as well and all sorts of cards and tags and um, bookmarks and, and I don't know, any anything paper you can think of. They had and everything was gorgeous. So all of this is from them. Look at these, these beautiful Christmas tags that I got and they're really high quality. They are very thick paper or cardstock I should say. And they are just so adorable. And I think we all fell in love with this little car with the Christmas tree. <laughs> I think all of us got that one. Yeah, so here I'm showing you the information of that shop. It's called Bomo Art Pest. And yeah, as I said, I will link them below in case you want to check them out online. Definitely worth it. I think I will have to check them out again as well or go back I think because their stuff is just too cute. And this is something I got from my friend in Germany Annette. So she had sent me this cute pocket filled with goodies and I wanted to start off by using the pocket and um, unfortunately, I had torn the top there. Um, the paper is quite brittle. It's it's very old book page. And so I thought I would just repair that with my Red Reindeer washi and kind of put it in several places. First of all, to make sure it doesn't keep tearing since I did want to use it as a pocket in my book. And also to kind of make it look like um, that 
the washi was there all along so I put it on a few more spots just to to make it look like it's supposed to be there <laughs> so here on the top I also wanted to make sure it doesn't tear further so now I'm gluing the whole thing with my tacky glue onto my book page And I thought that was the perfect spot to put in these two gorgeous tags that I'm so happy with. And I put this one in front so you could see through the glassine part. And this is, this is the one from Eva and she didn't tie the red bow because she thought she didn't know um, if we were going to put it in our journals and she didn't want to make it too bulky, which I thought was such a smart idea. So I just wanted to tear it off with some twine and now I'm just cutting the ribbon a bit slanted and that looks really cute and I'm gonna stick that one in the pocket behind the other one so you can see yes yeah, so you can see the joy picking out and I adore this page so I have I mean how lucky how lucky am I I have three beautiful pieces from three friends on that one page that makes me so happy so but now actually starting on day 19 so this was one of the cards I got from this BOMO art from the Chris, uh, Christmas market and I really had to use this card because she and her dress are just the most adorable thing ever like I want that dress now <laughs> and I, it was a card, um, but it was too bulky and I didn't really know how to attach it in my journal. So I cut the back off and so now it looks more like a postcard. And what I wanted to do is for the back side, since it was plain, I wanted to make a red background. So this lovely red piece that you see there on the right is was also from Annette's Happy Mail. And so that was the one that inspired me to look for various reds that would go together with that one and that I could just cover the back side with. And so I chose all my, all my um, scraps that are in the same color family and I'm trying to cover that whole card with them. And then I noticed I still needed another piece, so I chose this one. So this is the only one that wasn't a scrap already. Because I don't want two of the same to be on the same, uh, to be next to each other. So now I've already glued everything down. I am just uh, rounding the corners. And this was a tag that Annette had on her Happy Mail. And... I'm just cutting off that that string or twine and I am gluing this down with my three-in-one glue first of all I'm gluing the backs down just to be sure that they hold because I didn't have the patience to wait for the glue to dry I just taped them down with some regular tape and then I'm going to use it like a tuck spot so I'm going to use my three-in-one glue to just glue two sides down and then I'm just clamping that down because I felt like it needed to be pushed down a little bit. This was another beautiful card that was in Annette's Happy Mail. And it already had the rounded corners. I just inked it up and I'm making a small hole with my crocodile. Adding a small eyelet. And putting that in. Then I wanted to use that piece that I had cut off to make a bow. And since that twine was very stiff, I thought it would be better if I would add some 3-in-1 glue to the knot so that it wouldn't open. And I'm going to stick that inside my tuck spot, which by now is glued down well. And I just love this, this paper clip with the, with the stag head. I adore that so much that it definitely had to stay there. And this is another Christmas stamp set that I had got 
at least two years ago from Depot um, here in Vienna and I thought I would use the one that says Xmas and I'm using my plum archival ink and I'm stamping on a separate piece of scrap cardstock and I'm tearing it with my tearing ruler I have that one linked below if you need one I think one is a uh, eBay link and the other one I think is Amazon UK if I'm not mistaken and I'm just backing that with some cheesecloth just to add another element and to add some more texture and I am going to glue that cheesecloth down with some glue stick because it's it's thin and delicate enough that it will hold with the glue stick and then I'm going to take my tacky glue and glue the cardstock over that and then what I added afterwards um, you, you, you might see that in the photo later is I added a a letter that I folded up that was in Annette's happy mail because that definitely had to go in my journal as well and now I am just punching out the number 19 for that day I'm gonna add that I think to the bottom right if I'm not mistaken yep and that is the card and now we have to find a way to put it in the journal definitely wanted both sides visible and I decided that I wanted her on the front side and so I'm gluing her in with my washi and adding some extra glue stick because otherwise that would never hold because the card was quite thick and heavy added it to the second side and the first side came off <laughs> so put some more glue on it and I think that did the trick I think that is still holding so that seems okay yeah so that's the 19th moving on to the 20th now I had gotten another happy mail I'm being showered with happy mails now <laughs> and this one these are some bits from Elaine from chatty Elaine she has her own YouTube channel which I will link below and lovely Elaine is in the UK and so she sent me a whole bunch of napkins and in in that stack were some Christmas ones that you've just seen and I wanted to use this beautiful one again more deer you can have never have enough deer in your journal <laughs> and I am using this picture to make a pocket so I'm just backing it with some cardstock figuring out how big I want the pocket to be so first I cut this cardstock to size, completely covered it with my glue stick, and now I'm just putting my napkin over it. I don't want to mess around with decoupaging or wet glue or anything like that. It's not necessary. The glue stick is awesome, and that kind of gives the napkin this almost like fabric like feel, which I really love. So I'm just of course inking the edges now I'm gonna glue with my tacky glue around the three sides and there we have a beautiful pocket and Elaine also sent me this beautiful paper pad with a lot of yeah, and this came from the works in UK I don't know that shop or chain I don't know what it is but I want to go there <laughs> and so here I'm just showing you the different designs and they're all lovely. That was a really hard choice. And I wanted something with a light background because on this one I was going to try to do some calligraphy. So I, I kind of forgot to show you the prompt for this. I will show you, I think I show you after I, I do the card. So I'm going to use mods prompt. As always, the prompt list is linked below. It's for free. There's two versions. There's the one from prompt, uh, from prompt. There's the one from mod, and there's the one from Rachel. And Rachel's has the same prompts. She used the ones from mod, but she has them in tag form. So those are 
really fun to use as well and now I'm going to take my calligraphy pen and I'm choosing my two millimeter flat nib and I'm going to attempt to do some calligraphy with the font that I'm in the middle of still learning right now and it's called Ro I mean I'll tell you the German word it probably is the same in English rotunda and I'm using this beautiful gold green ink that I'm loving and so the prompt says fill your page with words in different fonts and sizes that make you happy so I'm not quite using different fonts and sizes it's all the same font and size but I thought I it's okay I can bend the rules a little bit because my book my rules <laughs> these these um, prompts are just inspiration you can change them to work for you and so the four words I chose were kindness, compassion, generosity, and respect. And yeah, the card is far from perfect, but it will do. Um, I like documenting my progress of my calligraphy. So it's great to have this in here, no matter if it's perfect or not. It will show my process, uh, my progress. Also my process, I guess. <laughs> so here I'm just showing you the prompt. It's number 23. I'm amazed how many prompts I've already done. I didn't think I was going to use that many prompts, but they come in so handy when you don't want to think of what to write or you think you have nothing to write about. They are just perfect. So I'm sticking that in there. And next I'm again using my sticker sheet from Seven Dots Studio. And I am choosing the one that says choose to shine for the pocket. And lastly, I'm going to add the number, which was 20 for the date. And I'm again going to use my plum archival ink and I'm just using here a scrap of what I cut off from that paper so it would be the same and I'm using my heart punch inking it up and trying to find the perfect spot and it's going there on the top left and that's my third spread for the day not for the day for this episode <laughs> so there you go hope you have some inspiration for your own journals hope you're keeping up with december daily as best as you can without freaking out about missing any days <laughs> so hope to see you in the next one i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for hanging around and watching bye that we'd find something true And that everything would change from now on Yeah